Hi folks, I hope you're all doing good. Um, it's 6.30 a.m. Sunday morning here on the uh, Eastern Time Zone in uh, the U.S. So we're going to make some history. The first part of making history is we removed the block. So the spin around the block is not really a spin around the block. But anyway, I got the towel out so we can throw down some Barlows and have a little Barlow party. Um, first, let us uh, uh, let me make a few comments. The reason why I'm doing this, I told you before, it's kind of like a uh, my, my type of COVID relief uh, effort for some of my buddies here in the uh, knife world. Um, there would be a couple different ways you can take the prize. If you have a PayPal friends and family account, I can um, shoot the winner over a $40 little lump sum uh, each winner. Or I can help you get uh, a knife off your um, wish list. But, I mean, if you want to take the money, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, you could probably buy a $20 knife and go out and get a couple steaks and you know try and have a good time with all this uh, all this madness that's going on but uh, anyway first let me start by showing this before I gathered up all my Barlows I contacted the guy I know to be the most knowledgeable of Barlows and asked him if he would consider this being a Barlow pattern because it has a uh, Barlow style bolster. And he said, by no, mean, <clears throat> by no means is that a Barlow. So I'm not going to count this. Um, and that's uh, Matthew Sanders from Sanders Knives. Throw out a little plug. If you guys want to check out uh, his website, he has one on Facebook. Um, if you want to take a look at what a Midwestern uh, gun and knife shop looks like, uh, with lots and lots of guns and ammo and knives, uh, check it out at Sanders Knives uh, on Facebook. Uh, you don't have to have a um, Facebook account to look at some of the pictures in there. Because this guy has probably the most uh, awesome display of vintage Barlows you ever seen. So there's a little plug for uh, Matt, Matt Sanders at Sanders Guns and Knives and Ammo Shop in Indiana. Uh, Leavenworth, Indiana. So I'm not going to count this one, but we'll go ahead and start. No better time to start than now. Uh, first, let's start out with some big ones. A Granddaddy Barlow, Robeson, built by Queen, 1993, stag handle. Oh, let's see, we'll put this up here where we can see it. There. There's one. I'm probably not going to count, or I'll, um, yeah, I'll, I'll count them at the end. Uh, and here we go. This is a true Robeson granddaddy. This is pre-1962 and a strawberry Delrin saw cut handle. This is a fun knife. Lots of pull on that. So we'll put that up here. Uh, I'm going to try and do the bigger ones so I can put them in the back first. Say a large Winchester end capped Barlow from 1976. It's a bicentennial edition. A really cool knife. Lots of positive feedback with that one. I'll put that up there. <coughs> Let's see. We might as well do a little bit of sugar. And spice right here 
is a Taylor's Eyewitness Buffalo Horn Barlow. Just a gorgeous knife. Filed, uh, uh, worked back. We'll put that one up over here. And we'll continue with that same theme with another Taylor Eyewitness Barlow single blade. And this one has the filed uh, back and Ambonia Burl handles. We'll put that one over here. And of course, the third Lee White of the bunch is this. This one's uh, made in Oxhorn. And if you look, this is quite the user. This one's getting a little beat up. Um, but it's fun. It's been a fun user. It's probably got more time. It's probably got more time as a user on my job than any other knife that I own. Just because it's a real fun knife to use. And since I only paid like $55 for it. I had no problem uh, beating it down a little bit. You can see the blades. It's surprisingly not much um, scratching for as much as I've used it, but there's a little bit. We'll put that one right there. Okay, let's go to the Canal Street. Barlow. With the awesome bolster design or stamp. In a what they call a sunset bone. We'll put that right there. Uh, next. A queen number 69 walnut handled barlow with D2 steel. Just a beautiful barlow. So we'll put that one down there. Next, let's do. A Russell Green Green River Knife Works. This is actually made by Bulker, and it's a smooth red bone, blood red bone handle. Again, another gorgeous knife. Put that down there. Uh, stay in that same kind of bulker theme with a burnt chimney razor barlow and a mother of pearl there's a serial number on it and everything gorgeous knife and let's see we we'll keep on going Here's another bulker. This is called the Farm Boy. This is, was made in 1983 in Germany. With a pretty cool etch on it. You got a little farm boy there fishing. Bulker, Germany. This also has a serial number on it. So we put that there. Uh, Let's do the lion steel in a ram's horn handle. Little fit and finish problems. I mean, there's a little bit right here, but I think that's just because these are all pre made handles that just get fastened on. 
And there's your M390 steel. Really sweet Barlow. And let's get into some case products. You have a case in a green and a green Appaloosa bone, smooth bone. Really like this knife. Haven't got to use it yet, but I will. We'll put that over here. Continue with the case. This is a smooth dark red bone two blade Really distinguished distinguished looking knife Let's See the back side Let's see still another Another case, smooth bone, smooth white bone. This one I've used quite a bit. Just a cool knife there. Those, these case uh, Barlow's are really, really tickling my fancy. Here's uh, one more, last case Barlow. This one was made in 1982, and this is just a smooth Appaloosa bone. Love that knife. Okay, let's start going into, uh, well here, let's do another modern Barlow. This is an A.G. Russell lockback barlow, or back lock, however you want to describe it. And it's in a coca bolo. I don't know if we can see the tones on that. But that was, that, that was a really nice find. I got this for like $30 or something. Locks up really nice. Uh, let's go with some vintage. This is a vintage Schrade Walden. Some beautiful uh, peach seed bone. And almost like a peanut butter color. And of course the rework uh, reworked on the blade profile. And a vintage keen cutter with just some marvelous scales on this. This is anywhere from a 1930 to a 1940. It's kind of lost a little bit of its uh, walk and talk, but a nice knife nonetheless. Still has some snap. Then we have a vintage Russell Arch Barlow in an oxbone. Some really nice coloring. This is one of my favorite knives here. <clears throat> this one's lost some walk and talk too, but it's still pretty solid. No blade wobble. That baby was appraised at 160 about a year ago, $160. I paid $55 for it. And continue with the vintage. Here's a vintage trade with uh, mammoth covers. I like that decay on that side. And you got the elegant bolsters on this one. Now we'll move into a couple Camillus. 
This is a Camillus Model 11, uh, 1960s era. Really well built Barlow. In great shape too. Lots, lots of steel left on that blade for a, a 1960s. And this is another Camillus. It's actually a Camco. Camco 551 in a saw cut Delrin. Black saw cut Delrin. As you'll see, Camco USA 551. Very popular knife. In fact, I think one of our subscribers has one of these for a daily daily user. I don't know if it was Chris Osh or GLM, one of you guys. <laughs> okay, still in the vintage realm. <clears throat> Got a 1950s Boker single blade. This is actually a saw cut bone, but the pocket wear has almost smoothed it out. Um, forgot what color they called it a caramel that's what it is a caramel bone caramel however you want to pronounce it but it has the cool uh, boker usa stamp this is even still got some walk and talk from the 1950s it's the 495 model spear point beautiful knife so we're getting quite a few up here how many more does Warthog have? That's the question. Uh, let's see. Here's another Boker USA. Tree brand. This is a 60s to 70s era. It's the 493 model. In great condition. I haven't seen one in this good a condition. It's a little light on the metal. But... Not too bad. There's still probably about 80% there on the steel. Lots of snap left. Put that right up here. Okay, let's keep on moving on. Um, here's some more vintage. This is a 50s to 60s uh, Wooston home. It's a black saw cut Delrin. IXL model, lots of snap, Wooston Home, Sheffield, England, and the famous Oil the Joints. This is a great user here. I haven't done a video on this one yet, but I really like this one. It has a lot of spring where you might want to keep your fingers out of the way. Good thing I started to do this at uh, 6.30 a.m. because we're 18 minutes in. So it's probably going to take about three hours to upload this. So you guys may not be seeing this for a while. Or when you see it and look at the clock. Uh, this here is a K-Bar. This I haven't used this yet. This I bought this from Matt Sanders at Sanders Knives for $40. And that was before I knew... You could um, make an offer and bring them down. Uh, I really like it. It's a Delrin, saw cut Delrin. Um, I think it's 90s, 1990s era. There's some patina on the, on the back. But a really nice blade style. So we'll put that there. Uh, some more vintage. This is a 1945 to 1955 Hammer Brand Barlow, uh, end capped. And you're never going to find find one of these in this condition. It's a shell handle, has plenty of steel left. The fit and finish is outstanding for a. Um, a shell handled knife but it has walk and talk on both blades unbelievable for for its age uh, let's 
let's get into some Winchesters. We just seen a few of these. This is a Winchester made by Queen for blue bluegrass cutlery with the super long cool bolster and a jig Delrin handle black nice spear point blade put that up there so how many does he still have well we're keep going here's another Winchester this is the um, collector's edition from the box here uh, it's a checked brown bone it has some nice red tones to it beautiful look on the bolster really impressive knife for the price so i think it was 25 dollars for the knife and the box nice blade shape once again that's china made this one was made uh, in the USA, China, and <clears throat> there's another Winchester. This is a $12 bullet Barlow. Well, not, not a bullet uh, emblem, but I just call it a bullet because of the shape. Really nice knife. Again, a good, cool blade shape by Winchester. And I'm telling you, this handle is indestructible because I, I was smacking with a, with a hammer to close some of this gap was actually worse than that. But I was smacking down on the pins. <clears throat> and sure enough, it closed it up. Okay, now let's go a little bit of Pakistan. It's a Pakistan Barlow, handmade. Um, Real genuine buffalo horn. Paid eight dollars for it. There's uh, quite a few cracks in, you know, stress cracks in the horn, but so far it's held up. Nice little purchase for eight dollars. Very attractive. Big meaty thick handles. Put that down. Okay, we got some more from Pakistan. This is called a bear hunter. And the steel was made in, it's German steel. Solenigen, Germany, stainless. 446. Three dollars. Pretty good fit and finish, a little bit of gap here, but it's an eBay special, $3, so I figured why not. You know, some people say, you know, they buy quality, not quantity, and that's that's good. That's probably the smart way to do it. I just, I like a variety. I've always liked a variety of things. Um, here is a $5... Uh, electrician's Barlow from Providence Cutlery in Rhode Island. It's got a little staining on the steel. But I, I use this quite a bit. I mean, you can untie knots with your boot laces and a whole bunch of things. That little hook comes in real handy. <clears throat> ah, yes. Marbles. In ram's horn. Just a beautiful knife. Pretty good fit and finish. There's a little bit of a gap up there. You got the birdies outside singing. And we got a frost. Bullet Barlow, Black Caliber, I think it's called, you know, Caliber. It's a good user. I like to bring this to work when I know I'm going to get my hands all sticky with um, epoxies and solvents and stuff. 
death down there. <clears throat> um, got some more mother of pearl coming here. This is a Parker uh, Eagle brand. Really nice knife. Some good, uh, good mother of pearl on this one. Like the blade style. It's a Seiki Japan look to it. There's your model number P820 Parker Cutlery. Surgical stainless. How many more does he have? Here's another Japan made. This is a Wooston Home Japan IXL. Really nice knife. Built well. Built very well. It's a big brute too. It's got some weight to it. Someday I'll do a video on that. So let's take a quick look. We, we're not done yet. And for the people that guessed 12, I think you might be off a little bit. Here is a buddy of mine sent me this. This is a HY Kaufman and Sons. And the more I play with this thing, the more I like it. HY Kaufman and Sons, Solingen. It's a few fit and finish problems, but all in all, it's a pretty cool looking knife. And it was free. So we'll put that over here. And here is another Wooston home. This one's in a red stag. And it has some really serious gapping here. I don't know how I didn't see that on the pictures. Because I overpaid way too much on this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Paid $65 for this one. Probably won't even be able to sell it for 30 just because of the quality issues. Wooston Home, Sheffield, England. But this is the newer, I don't know if Schrade was involved with making this. And looky here, the last Barlow, before we count them all up. This is uh, my newest Barlow. This is a, uh, a mini Barlow made by Hen and Rooster, which is in a beautiful stag. Look at that, look at that one piece they used here. <laughs> now these go for like 35, anywhere from 33 to $40. But I was able to pick this one up for $21 in a uh, auction. So I think that's a steal. Kind of uh, works good with my, um, <clears throat> what is that, the uh, Bird and Trout Fix Knife by Rough Rider. And that same theme of being small with some pretty stag. So my friends, that's it. Let's do the count and crown our winners. Let's see, we got one, two, three over here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty, forty one. Woohoo! And the graphics department, I was just kidding. They, I didn't fire them. They weren't going to go on strike. They came up with this. Boom! 41 as your winner. Or as the winning target number. Now for the winners. One winner would be Tobias. His pick was 42, and he was one away. The other winner is Rhino 54. Congratulations, Rhino 54. 
Uh, he was two away. His guess was 39. So, I'll be leaving my email in the description box. So, you two guys contact me. If for some reason you turn down the gifts, there will, will be a runners-up uh, drawing. And these three fine gentlemen were three off. The Marshalists picked 38. GLM picked 38. And David picked 44. So, if Tobias or Rhino, for some reason, don't want the, the gift... Or if they're in jail and they won't be out for a couple years, we'll do a drawing with these three gents for um, for the second winner. So, my friends, that's it. I hope that was fun. It was a little bit of a Barlow party. Let's take a good look. This is the longest video I ever did. Hope you all stayed along with it.